Hello everyone, welcome to our course Solar Photovoltaic Fundamental Technology and Application. Today is our week 4 and module 1st. So far we have learnt about first generation and second generation solar cell. In first generation solar cell we have taught about single crystal silicon solar cell and we have seen how to process a single crystal silicon and how to make a solar cell from this single crystal silicon. In next thing we have learnt about the second generation solar cell, there we have seen how to make a thin film base or amorphous silicon solar cell. In today's lecture we will start about third generation solar cell. Now as we also mentioned previously this third generation solar cell that includes lot of different varieties of materials. As the new and new materials were discovered, new and new varieties of the solar cell also come into the picture. For example, disensitized solar cell, organic solar cell and perovskite solar cell. In today's lecture, we will learn about disensitized solar cell. Now one of the biggest challenge or questions uh, which came to the mind of our scientific community is that why an artificial leaf cannot be made. So we all know that the plants make their own food by a process called photosynthesis. So what they do that? They take the water molecule from the ground and they absorb the carbon dioxide and using this carbon dioxide and water molecule by a process known as photosynthesis, the plant make the food. And in this process, the chlorophyll pigments in the plant leaves helps to convert this water and carbon dioxide to generate glucose molecule and as a byproduct oxygen is also generated. And we take that oxygen and release that carbon dioxide and on the return plant take back that carbon dioxide. So the main powerhouse or main cooking place of all this glucose food is happening in the plant's leaf. And if we look, look closely, this plant leaf contains the chlorophyll pigment. Now what is this chlorophyll? Chlorophyll is a biomolecule which is attached to a porphyrin ring just like here. Now the question is that the green color of the chlorophyll or the green color of the leaf better to say comes from we know from the chlorophyll pigment. So if we make this green color of pigment or if we make a chlorophyll like molecule in the laboratory, can we also mimic the photosynthesis process in the lab? So let us look at that thing. So uh, the question is that when light falls on a material or like in this case our uh, plant leaves when lights excites, so what happens it excites the porphyrin ring. And chlorophyll is a protein complex that separates the charge carriers. Charged chlorophyll is reduced by oxidation of water, two water molecules and oxidized releasing oxygen and protons 4H plus and the released electrons power the transport of protons further interact with adenosine triphosphate for cell energy eventually reducing carbon dioxide to sugar. This is like you know in a nut cell the process happens in a plant. Now in 1970, Helmut Trivers and Melvin Kelvin wanted to study the electrochemical properties of chlorophyll in an extracellular environment. Extracellular environment means like away from the plant system or it is away from like you know uh, any in vivo system. So whether we can mimic these things in our laboratory. They found that they could achieve charge separation using large band gap semiconductors for example zinc oxide and cadmium sulphide in contact with an electrolyte. Later on we have found that even a, a common semiconductor which has a large band gap is titanium dioxide and this titanium dioxide is used very commonly to fabricate the disensitized solar cell. Now chlorophyll injects electron from excited levels into the conduction band giving an anodic photocurrent and charge separation is irreversible. The electrolytes is oxidized at the chlorophyll molecule and is reduced at the cathode to complete the circuit. In 1970, uh, these two guys, Helmut uh, Tribus and Melvin Kevin, they used this process to measure the absorption spectrum of various chlorophylls and natural organic dyes. In the absence of an energy gap, the charged chlorophyll molecule is quenched since both holes and electrons can be conducted in the metals. They use zinc oxide semiconductor anode and platinum cathode in KCl electrolyte solutions. So long before the concept of disensitized solar cell came into the market, Already there was a uh, existing idea uh, like we can use some kind of semiconductor and some kind of pigment where the pigment will play the role of absorbing light and the semiconductor will play the role of conduction of the charge carrier. All we need is to regenerate this process and the regeneration of the process usually is done by the electrolytes. And in the earlier days in the place of electrolyte people used to use some kind of KCL electrolyte solution in conjunction with the semiconductor layer. 
Now, this concept later on further uh, converted to the today's so called the disensitized solar cells or DSSC. Here in this picture, we are showing that there are some transparent window or even transparent door which was fabricated by this disensitized solar cells. Now, one of the biggest advantage that we already mentioned previously that this organic photovoltaics including this disensitized solar cells, they can be make flexible as well as transparent. So, that means we can put it on any substrate on which we like to put it and at the same time light can also transmit through them. So, the benefit is that let us say I have a wall and I can replace that with some transparent disensitized solar cell so that we get complete amount of light in the daytime and also it can generate the energy. So, the concept of the zero energy building can only be realized by this kind of design and disensitized solar cells does that job. Now, this DSSC or disensitized solar cell it is also commonly known as gradual cell because this was first discovered by a Swiss scientist Michael Gradgel in 1991. So, this DSSC concept was first pioneered by in 1991 by Reagan and Gradgel at EPFL laboratory at Switzerland. The DSSC solar cell can be made flexible that means, we can put it on any flexible substrate. It has a good potential for being a low cost solar cell technology. The materials which we use to make this kind of solar cell is abundant in the nature even we can use some natural pigments or natural dye molecule to fabricate this particular kind of solar cell that makes them really inexpensive. This is mainly possible because of the large availability and the low cost of the ingredient material as well as due to the low processing temperature. Later on we will show that one of the major ingredient of this disensitized solar cell is titanium dioxide a large band gap semiconductor. Now, this TiO2 or titanium dioxide is very very commonly used in paints and in toothpaste and in many other day to day applications and it comes really very inexpensive way. We can use this titanium dioxide as a charge transport material in the disensitized solar cell. Now, as a dye or sensitizer we usually use some metal complex dye like ruthenium dye, but we have an option to go to some other sensitizer which can absorb or harvest the sunlight in a visible or near IR spectrum. The DSSC is photoelectrochemical device as it operation involves a photon and electron and the chemical reactions. Sometimes this kind of reactions is also called electron ion interaction. The operation of DSSC is considered similar to that of a photosynthesis process. So, this is somewhat you can think about an artificial photosynthesis in the lab. Use of natural dye <laughs> extract provide natural non toxic and low cost disensitized solar cell with high absorbance level of UV visible and near IR. Now, one of the important parameter while designing the this sensitizer molecule for a solar cell is that its absorption coefficient should be very high. Now, uh, the natural molecule some of the natural molecule has a very high absorption coefficients and they are really suitable for fabricating disensitized solar cell. Examples of some of the examples of this dyes are like Brahmi Henna which is uh, the scientific name of Lawsona Insernis L and Brahmini Resbaris Raspberry Sap. Not only this there are several like you know kind of berries and several kind of uh, fruit ingredients or fruit fruit extract also has been used to fabricate this dye sensitized solar cell. Now, uh, comparison to the solid state device and the dye sensitized solar cell we can see that DSSC has some major advantage over the conventional solid state device. So, in the, uh, the left column the SSC which stands for the solid state uh, solar cell and the right hand column which stands for the dye sensitized solar cell we are showing some of the major difference in terms of some parameters like the first parameters is the transparency. Now, the solid state solar cell for example, like you know thin film solar cell is a opaque. So, the light cannot transmit completely through this kind of solar cell whereas, this DSSC can be transparent. So, one of the application or advantage for being so transparent is that we can make transparent window or transparent glass where the concept of the zero energy building can be realized by implementing this kind of solar cell. The second thing is that like you know these are uh, environmental friendly although we claim that both uh, thin film solar cells and the DSSC both are environment friendly, but the kind of material we use to process the DSSC is more biodegradable and more environmental and eco friendly in comparison to the SSC devices. Power generation cost is relatively low in DSSC in comparison to the solid state devices because the ingredient material are inexpensive and the processing temperature is also very low. The next thing is that power generation efficiency. 
past generation efficiency of course, as we also mentioned earlier, the second generation solar cell is little bit higher in comparison to the DSSC or disensitized solar cells. In disensitized solar cell, we can get 10 to 12 percent efficiency routinely and this efficiency number almost remains constant during the last 20 years. And the color of the solid state device is limited whether in the DSSC device de depending on the pigments or the dyes one use, the color of the device can be tuned. Now, some of the important facts uh, which is important to know in related to this dye sensitized solar cell technology is that uh, the first we already mentioned that Michael Gradgel who invented this DSSC solar cell in 1991 and according to his name this solar cell is also called Gradgel solar cell. So, in literature sometimes you will find that gradual solar cell, but gradual solar cell is nothing but the disensitized solar cell. This technology is now on the verge of commercialization. Now, this is a very important point like although there are last uh, 20 years of research is going on on DSSC technology, but still like lot of uh, good role to role product has not came because of some of the disadvantages there. One of the disadvantages is that in this disensitized solar cell we use liquid electrolytes. So, the device is not a complete and, and a solid state devices and also the liquid electrolyte can be corrosive and at the same time they are volatile. So, the lifetime or the stability of this device is not as per level as the solid state devices. But people are trying their best to overcome this uh, shortcomings or disadvantage and there are some company mainly from the EPFL laboratory is right now making some roll to roll DSSC panel. The first cells were we capable of using light at the ultraviolet and blue end of the spectrum. By the end of the century advances in technology were able to broaden the frequency in which these cells were able to respond. Now, some of the remarkable properties of the DSSC first they are low cost, they are inexpensive to manufacture, they are non toxic or we will better say they are low toxic, earth abundant materials like titanium dioxide they are used in making this solar cell, good performance in diverse light conditions, high angle of incidence. So, as we know that during the daytime sun moves on the earth surface and the aim uh, or the, the intensity of the radiation over the earth surface that varies and it also varies geometrically. So, DSSC has a good thing that it can take care for the variations of the intensity by modulating the absorption spectrum of the dye. So, we can use a series of the dye which can take care for the different exposure level and different intensity exposure. It can also act in a low intensity because like you know it has a very high extinction coefficient partial shadowing, lightweight, any organic device is always little bit compact and lightweight in comparison to the inorganic devices. They are flexible that means, one can make it on a flexible substrate, they are semi transparent or transparent. So, light can transmit through them, bifacial. So, either you can pass the light from the front electrode or you can pass the light from the back electrode. So, that is why they are bifacial and also one have the freedom of choosing the color. That means, depending upon the pigments or depending upon the dyes where they absorb the light we can choose the color. Now, how a DSSC looks like if we explore the view of a DSSC or if you just uh, do some uh, cutting and uh, looking at this thing how does it looking like that you will see that all kind of dye sensitized solar cell has 4 to 5 basic components. This is a sandwich structure devices. So, in one end we have a conductive substrate and the other end also we have another conductive substrate. So, this behaves like a anode and cathode. So, this is the sandwich type devices. Any kind of organic devices is basically say sandwich type of devices. In case of dye sensitized solar cell, we put titanium dioxide and dye molecule in between the sandwich layer. In organic photovoltaic devices, we put polymers, usually donor polymers and acceptor molecules in the sandwich region. In perovskite solar cell, we put perovskite materials in the sandwich region, but they are all sandwich kind of solar cells. Here, like you know, we have two different electrodes. One is the conductive electrode which is usually made by putting some conductive layer on the glass substrate. As we know that you know if this is a glass substrate this is usually not conductive. How can we make a conductive by putting some kind of conductive layer? So, usually in the DSSC technology this is done by putting a doped indium oxide or doped fluorine oxide on top of a glass substrate and then we call it as ITO which stands for indium doped tin oxide or FTO which stands for fluorine doped tin oxide. Now, this doping makes them conductive and we can measure the conductivity by using some multimeter. The next thing is that on the other end we have another electrode which is also conductive and this conductive electrode usually we make by some platinum electrode by platinum catalyst. One can have the choice of using any kind of conductive ink on glass substrate to make this kind of counter electrode or the back electrode. Now, the front electrode is transparent usually light enters through this front electrode. 
In between these two layers like front electrode and the back electrode which you also can call as a photo anode and the cathode, we put our active layer. What are our active layer in the case of disensitized solar cell? The active layer is mainly consists of two components. One is the titanium dioxide layer and another is the di molecule layer. The titanium dioxide that is a semiconductor, wide band gap semiconductor and the role of the titanium dioxide is twofold. First to absorb the di molecule on the scaffold of it and the second is whatever the electron whatever has been injected to the titanium dioxide molecule, electron should be pass using the percolating network of the titanium dioxide. So, that is why once needs to make sure the titanium dioxide become as spongy as possible. We call it as a mesoporous structure in the literature. Mesopores means there are lot of large pores inside this material. So, the dye molecule can go inside this pore and at the same time the electron can get a percolating network to travel through this pores. The next important ingredient is the ruthenium dye. Ruthenium is a metal and uh, it has an absorption which spans from the lower UV range to all the way to visible range to somewhat to near IR range and it is a very commonly used dye. So, there are two different kinds of ruthenium based dye is used in the industry and they are known by the name of two scientists. One is called N907 or N3 and another is Z907. So, this N and Z they stands by the name of two scientists one is Najiruddin and another Z stands for Jakiruddin. So, and this 3 and 7907 they actually stands for the number of experiments or number of the sample value which works for the best. So, they have tried so Z907 means so he has synthesized like you know 907 samples before that and 907th molecule shows a good property in comparison to the other and that is why that has been commercialized. And what is the role of the dye? The role of the dye is to absorb the light so that the electron can go from the ground state to the excited state or we can go say that electron can go from the valence band to the conduction band. Now, once electron is a conduction band what will happen? Depending upon the energy level matching this electron will try to come to the next favorable energy level and titanium dioxide provide that matrix. So, the whatever the electron that ingests to the titanium dioxide matrix using the titanium dioxide's mesoporous structure that electron percolates through and finally come to the photoanode. Whereas, the hole whatever left behind that comes back to the ground state, but this whole process needs to regenerate. This is not a one time process. So, let us say I have an electron in the valence band and I put it in a conduction band. Now, after this process has been completed again the dye molecule has to comes back to the ground state so that it is ready for the next cycle of light absorption. Now, that role is played by the electrolyte, the number fourth component here. So, in the electrolyte business, we usually use iodine triiodide as a complex electrolyte, iodine minus and 3i minus. So, iodine triiodide electrolyte actually what it does like you know, it, it participates in oxidation reduction reactions and it regenerates whatever the oxidized dyes in the ground state. So, that this process can repeat and we can get regenerative electron flow inside the circuit. And finally, we put a sealing gasket to prevent it from the leakage and a platinum counter electrode on the back. So, again like you know, so basically the st structure is very very simple, we have two electrode, one is the conductive substrate ITO or FTO which is photo anode and then the back there is a counter electrode which is a platinum coated counter electrode. In between we have active layer, active layer consists of two components 2 and 3 where we have a titanium dioxide nanoparticle and we have a ruthenium dye, but we have a freedom to choose any dye depending upon its absorption property and then to regenerate the whole process we use electrolyte. And finally, we sandwich the whole devices using some kind of banana clip or some kind of the uh, encapsulation agent. So, that is the like you know I mean geometry of a solar cell. Now, uh, if you look one by one components, we will learn like you know how this different components play a role or how does the device physically works. Now, as you say that since the name suggests dye sensitized solar cell, so the word dye actually plays a very important role in this devices. Now, there can be different source of the dyes. Here we are showing certain kind of dyes like one of the very uh, popular dye which is used in the DSSC device is N3 dye and it has a structure like this where the ruthenium molecule is in the center and it forms a very giant complex which is surrounded by some benzene ring and some alkyl chain which helps them to solubilize this thing and tune the absorption property. Now, not only the ruthenium dye you can use any kind of dye. In the next lecture we will talk about what are the different kinds of dyes we use in a dye sensitized solar cells. The second part of the 
device was the titanium nanoparticle or the titanium and oxide based semiconductor device. Now, this titania plays a very important role, it has to be very very monodisperse and uniform. If the polydispersity in the titanium dioxide is very high, then there is will be a high chance of charge carrier recombination. And that has been achieved by making a very sophisticated or controlled way of titanium dioxide usually something around 20 nanometer particle. And we put the nanoparticle on the top of the glass substrate which is conducting in this particular case and heat that substrate beyond a particular temperature to make the substrate more spongy or mesoporous. And finally, everything this electrode is dipped inside the dye molecule and we put the electrolyte solution which is an ionic liquid iodide triiodide complex which acts like a redox couple. Now, uh, we as we said that there is a wide choice or wide varieties of the material we can choose for the DSSC which makes it inexpensive. In the case of anode material we can took titanium dioxide which we know exist in two different forms anatase and rutile. We can take zinc oxide, we can take steen oxide or any different morphological forms of them single crystal mesoporous film, nano dots, nano OS, branched OS or gyroid structures. People have used different kind of structures and this role of the structures is also manifold. Some of them actually help to confine the electric field, some of them actually helps to increase the internal electric field and to increase the out circuit output current in the devices. Now, as a dye we have a choice of using different kind of polymers or different kind of small molecule, organic dyes, inorganic semiconductors second generation dyes which includes donor acceptor donor which is bridged by a pi conjugation ring quantum dot and also like you know carbon dots and different kind of sensitizer molecule like laser dye one can also use. And as a redox mediator we usually use iodine triiodide electrolyte we can also use like you know S2 S2 minus dithiolate or like you know nowadays people are also using different kind of solid state electrolyte to prevent the possibility of leakage so that the device all become a solid state dye sensitized solar cells and other things like spirometed and every other things has also been used in DSSC solar cell. Now, uh, there are some engineering aspect of the DSSC technologies also by putting some kind of additive like tertiary butyl pyridine and the passivation of the surface treatment which reduce the defect states or the trap states one can also increase the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current in the device which ultimately increase the efficiency of this device. And as a cathode material we use platinum or carbon allotrope or period PSS. Even like highly conductive graphene or CNT is also used like you know for making this kind of counter electrode. Operation of the dye sensitized solar cell that we have already explained. Uh, first the light falls on the material you see here this is a dye molecule it has a ground state and then the excited state. Now the electron goes from the ground state to the excited state then further it injects to the titanium dioxide and using the mesoporous structure of the titanium dioxide electron percolates and finally come through the photo anode. And whereas, now the dye is now in an excited state it has to be regenerated who does this regeneration process the electrolyte. Electrolytes gives up the electrons so that the dyes can comes back to the ground state. Now, once it is in ground state then it is ready to absorb the next cycle of the light. And the iodine triiodide electrolytes now this works as a redox couple. So, this settles the electron chains between the dyes and the triiodide molecules. And finally, we sealed everything between a counter electrode and a photo anode. So, that you get a effective current in the outside circuit which is used to run a load. And that is why the, the schematic of a dye sensitized solar cells. Now, uh, the DSSC absorbs the light, generate carriers, transport carriers to the external load at higher voltage and brings back the carrier in the cell at lower voltage. So, as like all other solar cell there are four different operation takes place here. First the absorption of the light and that is done by the dye molecule. Second is the transport of the charge carrier that is done by the titanium dioxide. Third thing is the regeneration of the charge carrier that is done by the liquid electrolyte. And fourth thing is the passage of the electron from the titanium dioxide to the count to the electrode material. And that is done by the interfacing properly with the TiO2 and the ITO substrate. That is why the TiO2 layer has to be also very optimum. Now, the operation of the DSSC can be explained by these following steps. The first step is that the absorption of the light. Here, the dye molecule absorbs a photon and what happens the dye molecule goes to the excited state. If we call the ground state as S, if we number them by S and if we excited state we usually call it by putting a asterisk sign on the S. So, S star stands for the excited state and when S the dye molecule in the ground state absorbs the photon which is nothing but H nu where H is the Planck's constant and nu is the frequency of light it goes to the excited state. And this excited state this uh, dye molecule can then dissociate to a charged S plus and it gives up an electron and this electron percolates the TiO2 structure. 
So, uh, this kind of light absorption happens in a very short span of time, usually like you know in a femtosecond time scale. And this can also be we can put it in terms of this equation S plus photon is equal to A star which is an excited state finally it disintegrates to S plus the positively charged di ions plus the electron and this electron actually participate in the charge carrier conductions. Then the second step is that the excited electron is given to the conduction band of the semiconductor. So, it is given up to the conduction band of the semiconductor. What is the semiconductor here? TiO2. Now, a TCO layer or a transparent conductive oxide layer. So, TCO stands for transparent conductive oxide. So, just for example, ITO or FTO is a transparent conductive oxide. So, light can pass through them that is why they are transparent and they can conduct the electricity that is why they are conductive. So, a TCO layer is used to collect the electrons from the conduction band. Normally, fluorine doped inoxide is used for this purpose. The electrons then flow through the external load to the electrode counter which is made of the fluorine doped inoxide or FTO. In the step 3, the oxidized dye molecule is reduced to the original form S by regarding electrons from the organic electrolyte solutions. The electrolyte solution contains the iodide redox systems in which the iodide ions are being oxidized to triiodide molecules back to their iodide state. So, this step requires catalytic presence of platinum at the electrode. This makes the dye molecule again available for the excitation or reduction cycle. So, basically the role of this electrolyte is nothing but to regenerate the dye molecule in its ground state and it is nothing but an oxidation reduction reactions. So, the S plus which was now oxidized by giving up an electron. So, what it does it absorbs an electron and iodine does that job. So, and then it comes back to its neutral S state and we get iodine 3 minus and this process iodine to triiodide process that happens in the process of the platinum catalysis and that is why the platinum catalysis not only plays the role of a counter electrode, but it also catalytically helps this iodine to reduce back to the triiodide and recycle this whole system again and again. Here we are trying to show a video of uh, how to fabricate a disensitized solar cell and today we will demonstrate you how to make a disensitized solar cells also. Hi, I am Hannah, I am a junior at Pomona College, I am a chemistry major and today I am going to be showing you a simple way to make solar cells that convert light energy into electrical current um, using very simple components such as blackberry juice. Hi, I am Connor Camerlo, I am also a chemistry major at Pomona College. I am here to work with Hannah to, on the solar cells because solar cells are awesome. To make them, we are going to need to use blackberry juice, a microscope slide, titanium dioxide and an iodine solution. The type of microscope slide that we will be using is coated on one side with a special conductive oxide. This will form one side of the solar cell. So the first thing we have to do is determine which side has the conductive oxide. To do this, one thing we can do is use a UV lamp. One side will fluoresce and one side will not. So we see that this side is fluorescing. That means it is the glass side, so we do not want to use that side. But see, this side does not fluoresce, so that is the conductive side, so we want to use the side that does not fluoresce. We can also use a multimeter to see which of the sides has a voltage across it. Your instructor can help you out with that version. Our next stage is to tape the slide down to the table. When you type your slide down, make sure that three of the sides are taped to about one millimeter on the edge, and that one of the sides is taped with about three millimeters of tape covering the edge. Also, make sure that all of the sides of tape are sealed onto the paper, sealed onto the slide. Our next step is to make the titanium dioxide paste that will form the semiconductor for our solar cell. So here I've weighed out one gram of TiO2 powder. So now I'm going to take this and put it in a mortar and pestle. Now I'm going to add approximately 2 milliliters of ethanol. In this step, you can use ethanol, you can use propanol, you can use dilute nitric acid, but for this um, solar cell, we're going to use ethanol. Now I'm using a pipette to add it, but all you really need is just some way of adding it slowly. So you can also use a graduated cylinder. So here I'm adding 2 mils and now I'm going to stir it with the mortar and pestle.
you can add more solvent if you need it to get it into a, it should look like white paint or sunscreen at the end. Now that we have our paste, it's time to add our paste to the solar cell. Your paste should have the consistency of watery shampoo. You can take a spatula and add three drops to the solar cell. Now you want to smooth out these drops across the solar cell with a glass rod. Our next step will be to heat the TiO2 paste over an open flame. This will remove the solvent and allow the TiO2 to bind more strongly to the glass slide. So in our setup, we have a Bunsen burner underneath a ring stand with a wire mesh gauze on top. And be very careful when using an open flame and always have a safety a lab coat and safety goggles on. So now we'll remove the tape from the glass slide so that we can put it over the Bunsen burner. Note that because we had the slide taped down, our TiO2 now makes a nice neat square on top of the glass slide. Be sure to remove all the tape. Now we're going to put this on top of the mesh and light the Bunsen burner. Heating the slide drives off the solvent that we added to the TiO2. Remember that this is a really hot system and that cold glass looks exactly like hot glass, so do not touch it, you will get hurt. Also, with your flame, you want to have the inner tip of the flame just about touching the microscope slide so that you have the hottest part of the flame touching. A key component of a solar cell is a dye that can absorb light and turn it into energy. For our dye, we're going to use a dye in blackberries that we can crush up and put onto our solar cell. First you crush up the blackberries. Once we've mixed the blackberries thoroughly, we want to add 95% ethanol, right here. We want to add 12 mils of the 95% ethanol. We also want to add 12 mils of 15% acetic acid. Now you want to stir this up thoroughly too. Once you've stirred it up, you take a coffee filter, place the coffee filter over a beaker, and filter the dye. So 
So now we have our final filtered blackberry dye. We're aiming to get about 10 mils. That's plenty for what we are going to do. Now I'm going to pick up the TiO2 slide and simply submerge it in the blackberry juice. And it's going to sit there for 10 minutes. So while our semiconductor slide is soaking in blackberry juice, we're going to prepare the second slide that makes up our solar cell. So again, I've determined that this, the top side of the slide is the conductive side. And now we're going to coat a layer of graphite on top of it to help the electron flow. Our source of graphite is going to be a pencil lead. So I'm just going to put this down. And now I'm just going to color, basically, a layer of graphite on top of the slide. Don't be afraid to scrub hard on it. I'll draw on it again from another angle to make sure it's totally covered. And there's our second slide. Make sure that the entire square is coated thoroughly. So here you can see our graphite slide. So now we've got our two final microscope slides. Now we're going to assemble our solar cell. So here we have our slide that was removed from the blackberry juice it was in. And here we have our graphite slide. Now what we're going to do is put a couple drops of this iodine redox couple which is going to serve as the filler for the dye. Once the dye molecule has lost an excited electron, the redox couple replenishes it so that the circuit is completed. Now I'm just going to take two drops of this and put them on the graphite slide. And now I'm going to lay one on top of the other, making sure that on each side a little bit of the glass is hanging off. This will allow us later to help test the slide. The final step is to seal the solar cell. To do that, we're going to use two binder clips. Now, I'm going to clip the clips on the two sides that aren't overhanging. There's one clip, and here's the other one. And there's our solar cell. So this is our final and complete solar cell. So now the only thing left to do is to go outside and measure the voltage it produces. So now we're going to take our solar cell outside to test it. Here in sunny Southern California, we have plenty of sunshine. So what we're going to do is we have a voltmeter, and we're going to connect the two electrodes across the solar cell. And it looks like we're getting about half of a millivolt of electricity, so that's good. Great, so this concludes our demonstration of making a dye-sensitized solar cell, and good luck in building your own. Let's uh, talk about some of the factors which optimize the overall efficiency of a solar cell. First of all, the light absorption. So, it, as we said that it depends upon the dye molecule or the sensitizer's molecule. As good is the sensitizer molecule, the light absorption will also be that good. So, and also the sensitizer molecule should be good enough to absorb the IR part of the light. Second thing is that carrier generation. Carrier generation is also done by the dye molecule. Third thing is the electron transport. Whatever the carrier has been generated that has been injected to the semiconductor oxide, that has to be transported by the this semiconducting layer. So, that is why semiconducting layer has to be very, very uniform and optimum. Ion and hole transport that again depends upon the morphology of the devices. We have electron charge hole recombination. There are ways to prevent the recombination. We do not want lot of recombination in the surface. Band to band recombination is a very common process and we can prevent that band to band recombination by doing some passivations of the semiconducting layer. 
and also there can be charge transfer at outer contacts and then there are series resistance and sun resistance. When you have learnt about the equivalent circuit, we have seen that there are two different kind of resistance exist in a solar cell. One is the series resistance, another is the sun resistance. Sun resistance is the parasitic resistance which comes from the leakage current and series resistance comes due to the metal semiconductor contact or usually from the defect states. Now, if we can minimize this defect states or the trap states during the fabrication process, or if we can passivate the defect states, then we can minimize this loss due to the defect states recombinations. Now, similarly, if we can passivate the counter electrode and the TiO2 interface, then we can also reduce the amount of leakage current or we can reduce the amount of the sun resistance. So, that is why like you know we can control the current or voltage here. In the language of the organic solar cell, very often we replace this valence band and the conduction band by the word HOMO level and LUMO level. So, HOMO stands for the highest occupied molecular orbital and the word LUMO that stands for lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. You can think it as like a valence band and the conduction band in an inorganic semiconductor. So, what happens the dye molecule absorbs the light and the electron goes from its HOMO layer to the LUMO layer that means it goes from its valence band to its conduction band. Then according to the energetics this electron will be injected to the conduction band of the titanium dioxide from there it goes to the tissue which is here ITO or FTO. Now the electrolytes is there this regenerates this process and what happens this ion and hole transport material so the hole will transport in the opposite directions and electrons will come and that will settle and reduce back this dye to its ground state. And this electron which comes to the TCO using an external circuit it comes back to the platinum counter electrodes and this whole circuit completes and we get a current in the external circuit. So, that was the basic photophysics uh, behind a dye sensitized solar cells. Now, some of the important application of the dye sensitized solar cells we usually use for transparent door or transparent window in our building, large area DSSC panel for outdoor and building integration, especially for zero energy building. DSSC panels have been used for example as EPFL conference center, some of the examples we are showing here. Like in another very popular example of the DSSC charging panel is the in the E vehicle. Nowadays E vehicle is becoming very, very popular because of this lower pollution. So, now the E vehicle comes with a battery. Now, this battery is charged up with a solar cell. Many times in the western countries we use this solar cell as a dye sensitized solar panels. And also as a charging stoppage for the E vehicle at the bus stoppage or at the intermediate stop we can use like a solar panel as example it is showing here in the left hand side or also like in a, in a bus stoppage we can showing here at the right hand side. So, the different color of solar panels has been installed here. So, the bus comes stands here they plug and get charged up for some time and then again they can start. Now, in some of the airports also people have used the dye sensitized solar cell panels one such example is the Geneva airport at Switzerland where like you know DSSC panel has been used in the airport for uh, indoor lightning purpose. So, there are some application good application associated with the DSSC, but there are also some problems as I said that the efficiency even after doing 20 years of research is still less than 20 percent whether in perovskite solar cell it has reached to 20 to 23 percent efficiency or in single crystal or in amorphous event solar cell we can get routinely 12 to 15 percent efficiency. And this is due to the low absorption in the near IR region. Now, we use liquid electrolyte in this device and the liquid electrolyte has a very slow recombination kinetics. At the same time since it is liquid whole the device is not a solid state package devices. So, it has always a problem of the leakage and also moreover this liquid electrolyte is volatile. So, over the time if we leave it for some time this liquid electrolyte can evaporate. So, that regeneration process is stopped unless until we add again the liquid electrolyte we cannot regenerate this process again and again. So, that is why this process is not very in industry viable or industry friendly. And second thing is that during the course of the lifetime of a fuel cell the platinum cathode suffers from oxidation, migration, loss of active surface area and corrosion of the carbon supports and impurities. Now, today we will stop here and now we will show you how to fabricate a dye sensitized solar cell in really in the lab. We will start with a very simple dye sensitized solar cell and then we will demonstrate you about a popular kind of solar cell which is known as a jamun solar cell which is fabricated using a natural fruit called jamun which has a pigment called anthrocyanin. We extracted the anthrocyanin from the jamun and we fabricated a dye sensitized solar cell out of that. So, but before going to the jamun solar cell first we will show you how to fabricate a standard solar cell or standard dye sensitized solar cell. Thank you.